Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, and this is episode 18, which is the um, reunion part one. So um, before we get into this, I will just say this right away. Um, child, I watched these reunions in the wrong order. <laughs> So you may have noticed this review is late because I have Miami up first because I watched Miami first and Bravo. I just want to say this. Don't do this. Don't do this again. Do not have Miami and Beverly Hills on the same night. Don't ever do that again because I know Beverly Hills is like your star show that you guys really, really want to push on. But Miami is a better show. And this, I feel like it actually suffered a little bit because it didn't have its own night and it deserves its own night. Now, I'm glad that they are getting it together, but they're really not getting it together. They're only moving Miami part two and three reunion for another show. But moving forward, have Miami on its own night, please, please. Okay. Because it's hard to watch both reunions. Like, it was hard enough to watch both shows during the regular season the same night and then review it. But the reunion, because there's so much meat and potatoes all at once, it's damn near impossible to watch it back to back and remember everything and go into detail. Like, in both cases, I had to watch the shows twice to really fully absorb and figure out everything was going on, hoping I'm not missing anything. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to say that right away because I don't like that they did that to my girls in Miami. <laughs> okay. Don't do it again. Okay. Um, now, so far with this reunion part one, it was okay, but it does like make me think what's left for part two and three with, and this is the problem with when you have two shows that have a reunion going on at the same time. And I don't want to have that, but I can't help it. But I'm comparing. And with Miami, they really only got through a couple of the people's like stories. So I know there's plenty of stuff left for part two and three. They got through half the women's segments in this first like part of the reunion. And I know one's, I, I feel like one of the um, parts of the reunion is going to be very much catered to towards Kyle's divorce. But I hate to say this. I don't really care. I mean, I, I'm not happy that they're getting a divorce, but I don't care enough when I, I just don't care when it's a de demise of someone's relationship to focus that much on a demise of someone's relationship for a whole entire reunion. I don't think that's fair. That's right. I don't like it. And, 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 and with it being Kyle, she's already not the most likable person on TV, even though she's a face of Beverly Hills um, that has been there from day one. And she's kind of like the face by default because she's the only one that's still there from day one. Because honestly, I feel like if someone else was to bring it and do what Kyle does and Kyle was to leave, I don't know. I feel like it would be a different show and maybe in a good way, but maybe in a bad way. I don't know. But I'm just saying, after watching this first part, I'm just like, okay, this is not as good <laughs> as I was hoping for. And I kind of had a feeling it was going to be like that, which is why I reviewed Miami first. Um, because Miami brought me here and now I'm kind of like back down here. Anyway, um, before we get into the review, I will just say this also too. That Fox Force 5 thing is dead. And... There's a power, there is a power shift that I am interested, intrigued by. So I was paying attention to that the most when it came to this reunion. And I'm hoping the next season we're going to really start seeing it more. Um, so I am invested when it comes to reunion for that reason. Because I was like, ooh, the dynamics of this group has changed so much. The power dynamic of this group has changed too. Not in a toxic way, but it's changed. Um, people came to this reunion prepared. 
have their homework, and some of the others, not so much. So let's get into that. All right, so we see the ladies arriving at the reunion. They're getting glammed up. Now, since this is Beverly Hills, this is actually filmed in Hollywood, and they have trailers. They each have their own individual tra trailer. <coughs> and we see that Garcelle is saging her, you know, everything. Everyone lives in their truth. And um, Chris, um, sorry, wow. Kyle has crystals and I don't know what that what she's doing with all that, but okay. And then Sun is getting a pep talk from Avi to be strong sudden. She's going to be on it. And <clears throat> also, um, while everyone's getting ready, we see that Erica goes to actually visit um, Dorit to talk to her about her friendship with Kyle and how things are going. And we find out from Dorit that Kyle sent her a long, long text message um, the day before the reunion after not talking to her since like December. And so Dorit feels like she's being manipulated and being silenced because it did kind of come off super manipulative that she doesn't want um, Dorit to disclose certain things. It, it kind of read that way, so I could see how Dorit felt that way. But at the same time, I did kind of get the ick that Dorit supposedly is supposed to be Kyle's friend exposed these text messages because the text messages were there for all of us to read. Like she gave it, she gave these text messages to the Bravo producers and we can all read it. And I don't know if that was my friend, I wouldn't talk to her ever again. So both of them aren't right. Both of them aren't cool. But since I'll be honest, I'm indifferent towards both of them. So I'm just ready to see what happens with it. I'm just kind of like, okay, we'll see. And Erica, you know, she's like, I'm just hating how all this is happening because, you know, Erica, Dorit, Kyle, Teddy Mellencamp, who ain't been on the show forever, and then Lisa Rinna, who finally has sashayed away. They're part of that first Fox Force 5. And they're not even getting along right now, so it's a hot mess. But yeah, so that's what happened there. Um, so the ladies are then arriving on set one by one on their reunion outfits. And um, the ladies are waiting for Dorit to join. She's the last one to join because she's still getting her um, dress sewed on. Um, and the theme, as mentioned in the other video that I have, which you should check out after watching this full video, I literally broke down the looks of the ladies for this reunion, along with how I felt about them this season and all that in another video. But what I mentioned in that video also was the theme was Backyard Cocktail Party in Hollywood Hills. So that's what the theme of this is. And so they get the pleasantry starting um, where, you know, Andy greets everyone by, one by one, kind of commenting on their outfits or how they're feeling. You know, kind of the warm up to get everyone ready for the reunion um, before the show actually starts. So before, um, um, basically what starts the show, so the show starts and... Andy mentioned to Eric, mentioned what Erica said, um, uh, watch what happens live in relation to how e Erica got obliterated the past two seasons. She wants Kyle and the rest of the ladies to get the same treatment, basically. And we know that Erica said that and we know she meant that because she said it. She said it last season even, too. Um, that's why she was, you know, kind of a major component in trying to expose Kathy. So, yeah. But, uh, um, Kyle deflects and says, you know, I don't think, she, I didn't really take it personally. She had a rough year and I didn't take it personally. And she basically also states that Erica has been a great friend to her. So there's no reason why she would do something like that. And she's, and the thing is, she keeps saying Erica's a great friend, Eric's a great friend. Kind of, I feel like she's doing it to shade 
Dorit, because Dorit and her used to be like this, especially on the show. I don't know if they're like that in real life, but if, I mean, let, let Dorit say it, they were. Let Kyle say it, not so much, and shall we get right into that right away? Um, because before, before we actually do get into it, though, Erica does own it and explains where she's coming from, and she apologizes. She's like, you know, I was really speaking out of anger for the past couple of years. I'm in a great place. I don't really feel that way anymore. I, you know, I've just been hurt, and I just, and she, Erica basically say, stated that she felt hurt, that she literally felt that Andy was really, really ringing, him, ringing her hard. And she was, I mean, he was, but not really. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but not really. Um, let Carl's Kang ask you some questions, and I'll, I'll, I think you will have went away crying, Erica. Because I... I hate to break it to you. I think you got kind of let let off easily. Even though you had a rough year, I get it. But you're not a victim here. So, anyway. So then, Andy does ask to read the thoughts about Kyle stating, you know, what she said about her and Erica's friendship. And this is what opens a whole can of worms. And Kyle... Is doubling down that they're not as close as friends is what Dorit makes it out to be. And Dorit's like, are you kidding me? And honestly, according to the show, just the show alone and how long they've known each other on the show, I don't know. I don't know who to believe in that. So, and the rest of the ladies are just kind of just watching the back and forth because no one really knows what, what it is. Um, and Dorit, mentions a text message that Kyle sent to her the night before, kind of letting Kyle know, like, look, I'm not on your side on this right now. Um, so the truce that Kyle, I think, was trying to set, she kind of made it known this is not, that's not going to be what it is here. <laughs> and um, per usual, Kyle's not owning anything because Kyle doesn't, Kyle and accountability, they're foreign to her. She don't know what that is. She never, ever, has ever taken accountability on this show. And she never will. So Doree is just kind of left hanging here. And Erica's just kind of just like keeping out of it. Even though Erica knows about the text message too. Um, and the rest of the ladies, I don't think they're as close to like Kyle as like, you know, Doree claims that she was to her. So they're just kind of just look, watching and observing. So that's kind of what happened there. All right, so then next we have the Garcelle segment. And we talk about, um, so they recap um, Garcelle with, and her parenting. And then also the whole thing with Garcelle and Dorit. Her film, which won Astro Award and has multiple NAACP nominations. And um, this is all I got to say. Go, Garcelle, go. But... Um, we do learn after we kind of review this segment, Andy did ask some hard-hitting questions about the parenting of it all, co-parenting of it all. Um, because what was also shown in the recap was the fact that Jax knew about the affair and knew that his dad was the cause of the divorce. Um, and he knew about it since he was eight. And so Andy asked, well, has... You know, the dad talked to Jax about it since. He's like, he never will. He hasn't, and he never will. He'll never talk to the boys about it. He hasn't talked to him about anything emotional. Like, this is the reason why you see that I have all these, like, emotional-based conversations about sex and all that, because he won't do it. And that's rough. So it's kind of like, then what is he doing? Just throwing the money I mean, it comes off that way because it's like you're not being emotional support to the boys. So what are you providing other than just a roof over their head, which is kind of, you know, which isn't fair because, you know, Garcelle, we know Garcelle. We've known Garcelle really since the 80s. Garcelle's been in the game since the 80s. Coming to America was one of her first roles. Um, she was one of the flower people on, on the movie. And um, 
And then we really know her from the Jamie Foxx show, like in the late 90s. Um, fancy. And um, also her modeling career. You know, so she's been in the industry for a very long time, especially in the black community. We really know who Garcia, like we, she's been in, you know, that kind of world for a long time for us. Um, and so she mentioned also like, I, things have gotten better because I try to take the, I, I, I'm very, she's very selective. She says that she's very selective of the jobs that she takes and how many jobs she takes so that she has time to spend with her boys. And she even stated that this is actually the reason why she even decided to do reality TV because it forces her to stay home with the boys. Like it actually is helpful. Um, so it's just kind of wild to me that I feel like from what we're hearing, ourselves giving so much, but I mean, it's, I guess it's not really that surprising. The woman, the mother, and the life. And I know it's not like this across the board, but historically, historically and a lot of times, the woman or the mom in the life will be the one who has to sacrifice so much and do so much for um, to keep the family together, be everything, be every woman, basically, while the man or spouse gets to do the bare minimum. That's kind of what I got from that. I hope I'm not being toxic thinking that way. I might be a little bit, but this is also probably why I'm single. Because I'm just kind of like, if you're going to do the bare minimum, then why do I need you? Like, that's how I feel. And, and maybe this is why I identify so much with Garcelle and Sun's energy on this show as a whole. Because they both are boss women. And it's just like, if you're not going to be a, if it's not going to be a partnership, then what are we doing? You know, anyway, so from there they go into Garcelle and Dorit and the getting defensive, um, and Dorit getting defensive about Garcelle sharing how she didn't really trust talking about her, her family with the group yet, because we forget that the last season that was when Jax got cussed out by Erica and then also was getting cyberbullied, allegedly, by Diana Jenkins. So, I mean, yeah, Garcelle has every right to not trust this group when it comes to her family life, it, like her personal family life. And everyone else was okay with hearing that because they knew what they did and they're like yeah i get it i mean erica especially was just like yeah i totally get it because i was like the main one who she was a star of it you know and Doree just was like so defensive about it and this is where they go into Doree and garcelle's relationship as a whole and Doree is still dereading she's doing what she does best not understanding, playing dumb. And Crystal, this whole, so while Garcelle and Dorit's going, you know, back and forth, Crystal has um, Garcelle's back. She's like, yo, but can you understand that what you're doing is wrong? Like, just like own it, own it. And this is, it made this, by the way, when Crystal chimed in, this is where they made that shift talking about how Dorit used that word attack. And really, Dorit's many microaggressions with people of color in this group. Um, because, I mean, Crystal does get her together later on for a similar comp, for another off-putting, um, potentially racist comment. You know, whether she's being intentional or not, it's very racially, she... She has a horrible tendency of saying some racially insensitive type stuff. Whether, regardless of what her beliefs is, it's like she's not understanding that it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. Why are you saying these things? <laughs> I mean, it does, but I mean, words are still words. They, they're, they, it's not okay. And it's like she's not getting that. And I love that Crystal had ourselves back with that. And then we kind of go on to break and then 
pick me of the year chimes in. And I hate to call her that, but this is the energy I felt when she did this. So out of nowhere, Anne Marie chimes in with what while Dorit and Garcelle are going back and forth and pretty much capes for Gar capes for Dorit. She's like, you know, Dorit, um, she's like, you know, son did the same thing to me and no one had my back. But you know who had my back? Dorit did. And the situation that she's talking about is literally apples to oranges. They're not, it's not even the same, not even close. They're both fruits, but that's about it. It's not the same thing. What they actually show the footage of what Anna Marie was talking about. And Anna Marie, it's like she talks so much she doesn't hear what she says. I think that's what it is. And I think that's why she just is having a tough time on this show. Because she talks so fast and she talks so much to the point where she doesn't think before she talks. So when someone says, well, you just said that, she's like, no, I didn't. Because she's talking so fast, she's not, it's not, they're, the continents are not meeting when it comes to her, everything that she says out of her mouth versus what she thinks she said. And that's not me trying to cake for Anna Marie, but it's just a pattern I've noticed of hers. And I think it's so... I don't think she's doing it to be manipulative. I think she's just that unaware. I think she truly is that unaware. She comes off as someone who's that seriously unaware. Um, but so what she did here, she said to, um, so when she, they show the footage of basically the esophagus gate of Anna Marie saying, I don't want to, I don't mean to yell at you. But, um, and then she was going to say something to, um, she's, cause she was already talking kind of loud. She's like, I don't mean to yell at you, but da da da. And then like, you know, and then son's like, well then don't yell at me <laughs> because although she wasn't yelling, her voice did get elevated and you said, I feel like Anna Marie set her up to say, then don't yell at me because you led with don't yell at me. And to me, this is very problematic because it's like you're setting it like, I don't, okay. I, as a black woman, I already have a tough time where you say microaggression words towards me. Now, I have equally as much of a problem when you actually are doing those behaviors, but then you weaponize microaggression and stuff like that when you actually did do what was what you were accused of. It's like you're basically dimming the light of when that's not the case. The difference is with Garcelle throughout her whole entire time with Housewives, She's never really yelled. She's always just been pretty much assertive. Or if she has yelled, everyone's voices at that point were elevated. It wasn't just her just going out pocket and yelling. And with Anna Marie, she is, she, 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 she leads with, like, up from, from jump. That's her. And it's like, but she doesn't see that that's what she's doing. And what blows me away with her is like, you don't even, do you watch, you watch the show after you did it and you didn't see that this is what you're doing. It's like, she doesn't see it. And it's a case study. I, I'm just confused by it, but I just felt a way though, that you're literally caping for someone that you only met this year. And you basically are diminishing another black woman's experience for an event that you weren't even there for. Because that was the other thing. Anna Marie was not even at the Taco Tuesday. So you sharing your experience, you literally diminished something that we actually saw that was actual and factual. And I have a huge problem with that. That's like not okay. And... I'm going to be honest, when I saw that, I was like, this can be her. I, I really just want her off my screen. I felt, I felt kind of offended. I felt pretty offended by it, to be honest. <laughs> like, I don't like that. I don't like that behavior. That's, that's nasty work. Um, anyway, 
So while this is happening, um, pretty much all the ladies ignore what she said, including Andy, because they were just like, this is not Anna Marie girl. You're trying for a moment. This is not it. Like, and Garcelle even tries to say like, that's not even the same thing. <laughs> and as Garcelle was trying to like, you know, say like, Hey, that's not the same thing. Anne Marie did her like snappiness that she does. Like it's my, I'm still talking. I'm still talking. When you were the one who interrupted Garcelle to begin with, cause this is our Garcelle segment. This is not even your segment. That's the other thing that bothers me about Anne Marie. It's like you inserted yourself in the conversation that wasn't the conversation. You weren't even part of the conversation. And then you're not going to let someone interrupt you when you're the one who inserted yourself in someone else's conversation. What in the hell is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, then they go into the whole bubble thing that Dorit mentioned. Um, well, Garcelle mentioned that she's in the bubble and a confessional about how Dorit acts. And then we see that Dorit puts that freaking passive aggressive post on Instagram saying, I'm happy being in my bubble. And then she doubled down and said it again in a different way. And everyone's just like, girl. And Dorit is still playing dumb saying like, wait, you, you, you all thought that as me just giving the middle finger? And they're like, yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> and even like, Angie's like, girl, it didn't land. I don't know what you thought you were doing there, but that did not land. <laughs> um, side note, I, I want to say this real quick. It's super obvious. Andy loves him as McGarcel. So... I hate to call a thing a thing, but I feel like if anyone has a problem with Garcelle, it might be the wrong road for them because I could see in the future that they could, if Garcelle would share way more of her life, she really needs to share like more of her life than what she does. If whenever Kyle decides to leave, I could totally see they use Garcelle as like the, the person. If, and I mean, if she shared more of her life. Because Garcelle's still very super private. And she still doesn't really give as much as what she could. Um, but I think in the next couple seasons, we might see her do more because a lot of the toxic people are gone. So anyway. Um, but Andy pretty much sums it up to um, Dorit. And was like, you know... When the situations are this heavy like this, sometimes you just need to listen and say less. And everyone's just like, yeah, <laughs> there you go. So needless to say, things did not get resolved here. Okay, so this next segment was, I ain't gonna lie, it was kind of fluff. And this is probably the other reason why I'm just like, geez, Miami did such a better job because there was more meat and potatoes with the season. So they had way more going on. So this was called All About the Sex Talk. So it's giving recaps of Magic Mike. Um, didn't go into the details of the Magic Mike, which maybe they're saving that for like part two or whatever, or part three. Um, the bull riding, um, Erica's comments with bull riding in, <laughs> in relation to um, Sutton and her interesting bull ride that she had going on. Um, Sis ring. That shout out to Kim Pyre. I totally got that from him because he totally made a song out of that. And I've watched side. I just want to give my shout out to Kim Pyre. Every time now that I see that scissoring scene, I think of you and that song. Cause that song cracked me all the way up. And I've watched, I went back to watching that review just to hear that song. That song is the one I'm just going to say that anyway. And then they also do talk about um, Sun and the Driver. So it was a very short scene, a little bit fun, because I, I get why they added that in there, because they need to line things up, because that was heavy, because there, there was a lot of talk. I mean, there was talk about microaggressions and whatnot. They had to line it up. So there's that. And then we go back to Not So Light again, because now this is the Anne Marie segment. 
And um, Anne Marie did not give that much this season, and we know that because she didn't really show up till I think episode six. And she really wasn't open, but we found out why. So before we go into that, we do have some light phone where she's talking about the 8.5 talk. And then she says, yeah, I think my husband's also 8.5. Also, I was interested to know if they're going to mention anything in relation to the husband. They kind of skipped over it quickly, which I understood why. Because the man got some allegations on him. Um, yeah. But we do also find out that Anne-Marie's adopted mom, because Anne-Marie is, is, is adopted, which we did not find that out until the after show. We found out on the after show, which is the other thing that's just, uh, I don't, yeah. I feel like they're going to give her another season, but this is not a good season for her, clearly. Um, but then we find out that actually her mother passed away recently, her adopted mother. And she was sick with cancer and had like a tumor in her lung. The whole, during the whole entire filming of this show. Which, I'm going to give her some grace here. Maybe that's why she was just so like this. And so, um, not open to the group by anything. Because Andy did finally get something out of her in this reunion. And we actually saw a softer side finally here. But... I wish we would have known more about that during the show because that is literally what you sign up for is to share your life. So I think with Anna Marie, she should have never been a full-time housewife. She should have always been a friend of like, I think they really set her up for failure here because she did not um, deliver as a full full-time housewife. She definitely was Great. She's a decent friend of, um, from the perspective of starting things and starting conflict and all that. Like, um, I would say she's kind of like a Marlo, but not as controversial. Um, but we don't know anything about her though, which is kind of a similar issue. Why they end up getting with Marlo side note. Real Housewives of um, Atlanta, Sorora. That is that is news. They did get rid of them, um, so Marlo's not coming back for next season. And Portia Williams is gonna be back. So, child, I can't wait. Oh, I feel like that's gonna be my number one show to watch in the one show to review. So I'm excited about that. Sorry to go into the, that break on that, but it just. It's just Anna Marie really does give me friend of energy. <laughs> like she's not, she's not, she's not fit for full time. Um, although, I don't know. See, I, I hate being judgy and like not giving people another chance. But we got that softer side to her only for her to turn around and just kind of make things just bad again. So, um. This does lead to Crystal and Anna Marie going at it. Crystal won easily. It was false, false victory. Like, that was what I mentioned before that some people came to this reunion prepared. Crystal was one of them. Crystal and Garcelle so far, Sun hasn't said too much in this reunion for the most part, but Crystal and Garcelle have came prepared. And they're, they've been eating the girls up. Like, Garcelle read um, Dorit earlier on in the, re, in the reunion. And then Crystal easily just like, she kind of just did this with um, <laughs> with um, Anna Marie. Because Anna Marie is still trying to push this narrative that um, Crystal is making fun of her profession and all that. But Crystal just kept coming back with her with facts. She's like, no. And I mean, she had so many facts. It's like she did her homework. I was like, wow, Crystal, I love this. If I, I need Crystal to have this energy on a regular basis because this is the Crystal I'm liking. But anyway, so as Anna Marie and Crystal going back and forth, Garcelle chimed in too. She's like, see, this is our problem with you. You... <laughs> Because 
she oh man Anna Marie's relationship with the truth is interesting um but Crystal in a weird way was just like Garcelle I got this <laughs> not no problem but it, it did end up with Crystal did make the shift like you and the stupid esophagus thing like that was a you thing you did that and Anna Marie does apologize to Sun immediately and she's like um seeing it she's like especially seeing it back I feel horrible I you know I feel horrible and Sun accepts it and Sun does give her grace like you know this is your first time being on reality TV it is hard it is a lot especially if you're going through things at the same time it's kind of freaking impossible for that to be your first outing and so I did appreciate that Sun gave her grace um also at the same time it's just to me I really I don't know I'm I'm torn whether I want Anne Marie to come back or not I kind of don't just because she's just done so much to kind of rub me the wrong way um because also too in a lot of her arguments that she had in the reunion she was bringing up stuff from previous seasons as a viewer and I don't like that that's like okay so you're a fan and no one wants to see a fan as a reality, you know, as a housewife. I mean, huge example, the monk of it all. People loved her, but they also didn't because she was like a super fan and kind of like a psycho fan of the show. The thirst can't be that. You can't be that thirsty for your first roundabout. You have to pretend... I know it's almost impossible now because everyone knows what Real Housewives is now. But you cannot. You, you, you lose when you bring up something that you weren't even physically there for an argument. That's the other thing, too. It's just like Anne Marie is not good at arguing. She's very good. She thinks she's good at deflecting. But like deflection really only works when it's not so easily called out that you're deflecting. It's like with her, it's so obvious that she deflects. I mean, you need to take a lesson from Kyle. Like, Kyle's supposed to be, like, your friend that you, you, you already know prior to this show. You should have got some lessons from Kyle on deflection because she's, like, an expert at it. And sometimes I can't tell I got deflected right away with her. Sometimes. Usually I can, though, because if you watch the show long enough, you figure out when she's doing that because she does it all the time. But anyway, my, my, the point stands. Um, but, yeah. I guess that's all I got for that. <clears throat> okay, so the next, um, before the show comes back again, like from commercial break, Kyle tells a story about LVP meeting Crystal and then asking if, if Kyle's still on the show. And for me, this is really weird. It's like, Kyle, why are, why are you so, why do you let LVP live in your head rent free? Do you know that really, if you wouldn't have pushed her off the show, she would have been the main girl on the show? We all kind of know that. Is that what it is? I think it kind of bothers Kyle. I'm okay. Let's let me just let's just call a thing a thing because I don't know if this is going to be her last season or not. I feel like it might be. Um, or I mean, if it isn't, I think it kind of needs to be soon because. And take it from my personal life that I got going on right now. Do not let someone else tell you when the show is over. Leave before the show is over. But anyway. So. <clears throat> it's just weird to me. I just like. I think part of it is with Kyle. And what I'm getting back at. And I almost forgot what I was going to say. And that's why I kind of paused there. Is that. LVP, not only was that girl when she was on this show, but she was a fan favorite. And I think it really, 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 really eats her up that she has never, ever, throughout the life of this show, has ever been the fan favorite. And, she'll ne and she, unfortunately, never will be. Because she just doesn't have, I mean, for one, you have to be transparent. You have to have some form of accountability. You have to. Like all the things that makes you a fan favorite, Kyle doesn't do. <laughs> I mean, so that's kind of part of it. But anyway, 
So back to the show. It is the crystal segment, which see, we're already at one, two, three. This is like what the fourth housewife. We're going to go through four. Um, the next, cause it will go to the Kyle segment after this. So yeah, it's a lot of people have already gotten their turn already, but it's a Kyle segment. Um, not Kyle segment, but the crystal segment <clears throat> and they, um, talk about Crystal's birth. They sh um, show Crystal's birthday, which was a Vegas thing. Her eating disorder, not speaking up enough. The whole plight, the whole group had an issue with that she doesn't speak up enough. And the whole Anne Marie of it all. And after they show that segment of everything, um, basically she does open up about being in her head a lot. And you know, a lot of it is the side effects or part of her living with the eating disorder. She is always in her head because of that. Um, and also in this case, we know that a lot of the women have lost a lot of weight. Like Kyle has lost weight. Eric has lost weight. It just makes her just crawl back into her skin and look to see like, well, what am I doing? You know, and that's what Crystal said here. And then also too, she does explain, clarify Father, why did she go off on Anne Marie and called her a bitch? Because the whole, and we all knew this, it was because of the, the ramifications that basically Anne Marie suggested that Crystal was claiming that son has an eating disorder, which is ridiculous because someone who suffers from an eating disorder is not going to put down someone else's jacket. Well, they, they, I mean, maybe because I don't know. <laughs> The reason why I'm saying maybe is because I feel like Kyle at some point in time said that she had like bulimia or something like that. She was bulimic or something like that. And yet she definitely does, has done that. Outside Kyle, I think most people wouldn't do that, but we'll just say that. <laughs> but anyway, so Kyle, um, so, so Crystal addresses, um, Anne-Marie and is like, Yo, will you ever apologize for suggesting that? Because I'm going to need, she basically is like, I'm going to need an apology on that. Because that was messed up that she would even suggest that I would say something like that. And Anne-Marie tries to deflect again and doesn't own it. And, <laughs> and Chris was like, unbelievable. This lady, <laughs> and she literally said that. She was like, unbelievable. And... I mean, the whole point is, though, what I've got from this reunion. And Crystal has been saying in the interviews, she definitely clocked in. And nobody got an answer for it either so far, I've noticed. No one has an answer. It's like, oh, <laughs> this is the Crystal we've been wanting to see. And this is why she's been around for so long, because clearly for the producers, knew she had this in her. And I like this, I like this version of her. It's like, okay, okay. Anyway, so then it goes on from um, Crystal versus Dorit. And her horrible comment that Dorit made, basically calling, basically saying that, um, suggesting, because her she basically said that um, Crystal married her husband when she was 12. Crystal is Asian. That is a very insensitive comment. And Crystal even called it out. She's like, your comment is suggesting that I'm a male or order bride. Like, that's not okay. That's never cool. I don't know why you would do that and think that's okay. And, I mean, Doree backpedaled, had nothing else to say, really. She had no, she really had no rebuttal to that. And, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty much it for that. Okay, so last but not least, um, it's the Kyle segment. So it's talking about how Kyle has a new attitude from being a people pleaser to not really caring about what other people think type thing. And then also her changes in her lifestyle and comes to exercise and all that. And um, her changes of opinion. Oh, by the way, with the sex talk with the scissoring, <laughs> I kind of got sidetracked with that. Um, they did kind of share how, like, Kyle has went from being kind of a prude when it comes to the idea of, you know, being with another woman to now she's open to it. Okay, 
I didn't. I just, I forgot about that. And this is what reminded me of it. But anyway. So, and then they, you know, go into like how Kyle had moments where she would be open with the group and hang with the group. And there'll be other moments where she was just closed off and kind of disassociate. And then we see the segment about her opening up to her therapist about losing her best friend. And so after we go into that, Kyle, um, Andy does ask like, Hey, how are you doing with the grieving process? And I mean, it's six, her answer is pretty expected it's day to day. You know, some, some days she disassociates and other day she just kind of just stays on the couch all day and doesn't do anything. So I, I get that. And then from there, it goes to the Dorit and Kyle relationship in it, what, what, when it pertains to Kathy. And this is where it just kind of got muddy. And this is where, because Kyle doesn't, it's not a good arguer. She never has been someone who's been good at arguing. She usually frazzles and like runs away. But now that she has this new voice, she's still not a good arguer because she's new to arguing. <laughs> um, and so she kind of talks around in circles, but then she's going against Dorit, who also talks in circles, so no one gets anywhere. That's literally the gist of what happens when they argue. So, um, Dorit, though, had, like, she said, um, oh, I forgot Dorit at the very beginning of the reunion said that she has, like, bullet points so she can stay focused. And I think it did work, actually, when it came to the Kyle of it all, because she did try to stay focused. She's like, because Kyle just kept switching reasons why her and Dorit are not cool anymore. And she was like, well, I was wondering if it was a Kathy thing. Because this whole entire time, and this has been the thing that's been frustrating with Kyle as a whole throughout her whole entire time with Housewives is she's never direct. Ever. She's very much um, foreshadowing, breadcrumbs kind of person, very passive and passive aggressive type stupid stuff that gets on my nerves. <laughs> So she basically makes it where she, it's like she almost wants you to figure out what's going on. Um, she's the type of person where she wants you to constantly ask her if everything's okay. And then if you do ask her if everything's okay, she's still not going to give you a direct answer. So it's just like very frustrating. So it's like, what's the point? <laughs> and I feel like, that's sorry, that's kind of how I feel about it. And with um, Dorit, She's like, I have my relationship with you, but I have my relationship with Kathy. I didn't want to get involved in it. But to Kyle's point, she kind of did during the reunion because she she kind of was like, I feel like with this argument, she wants, she was like, it would be nice. I feel like Kathy feels like it would be nice if you take accountability for your part. Now we know Kyle and accountability don't go together. So... She shut, so, and, and Dorit called something out that was like, ooh, ooh. Because Dorit's like, yeah, when you get call called out, you do this mean, passive-aggressive thing where you shut people out. So you shut me out as soon as I call the thing a thing. Which, I'm sorry, that's what it looks like to us, too, that that's what you did. It doesn't look like you really were, you... You basically only like criticism when it's a positive and it's when you're in, when it's in your favor and it's when, and if it's behind the scenes and it's not on camera, like that's not okay. Um, and also too, after she did that during the reunion, instead of telling Dorit that she had an issue with that, she held on to it and just now mentioned that she had an issue with that. She, went, she held on to that for two years and finally tells Dorit she had an issue with that. And that's supposed to be your friend. No matter what type of friend she is to you, that's still you still call her your friend. And you did that. So that's kind of why I said at the very beginning, neither, neither of these women are good friends to each other. And really, I would say Dorit was trying. And now with I think Dorit has had enough. She's like, I'm not going to continue to try. And so, um, at the very beginning of the reunion, um, Ky um, Andy did ask, can their friendship be savaged? 
I don't think so because I don't think um, Kyle, until Kyle knows how to be a friend to others, period, I don't see it because she does not, accountability is something that she don't know anything about. And I think she really needs to talk to her therapist about that, but she really don't know nothing about no accountability. I, it seems like with every single relationship that she talks about on this show, I never had heard, heard her once say, I did something wrong. It's always someone else with her at all times. And I guess for me personally, I wouldn't want to be friends with anyone that's like that. Or I wouldn't even want someone in my life that's like that. Like, I've cut people off for less. That's just me, though. <laughs> anyway, but the other thing that um, Kyle mentioned, <laughs> C-Zero, Whispers in here, too. She's over here. She was out. That's who I was paying earlier, but this is Zero over here. For those who don't know, I have two cats. Um, they're both part Siamese, and Zero's the one that we just saw a little bit ago. He's now he's over there. And then Whisper, um, I was petting her earlier. I don't know if she ever even was in the frame or not. If you watch my yoga video, she's in those. That's Whisper. But anyway, sorry, I digress. So the last, so the other thing that Kyle used as an excuse because to me, this sounds like all excuses because she's saying this, all these things have, have piled up. Kyle thinks that Doree will change her answer based upon the audience. And I don't think so. I think she tries, but I mean, I, I mean, I, I feel like they all do that though. A little bit. You know what I mean? I think. Erica's like the only one that doesn't try to do that. Because <laughs> like, Erica doesn't care. But I feel like mostly everyone else maybe does a little bit. I don't know. But like, it's kind of hard to not do that when you're on a reality show. And, and I'm not going to lie. I think it was kind of um, project. I feel like um, that was projection. Because I feel like if anyone who does that, it's definitely Kyle does that a lot. Kyle has always tried to do that. Because as I mentioned before, it kills her that she's never been the fan favorite of the show. It kills her. I know she wants to be the fan favorite. Dorit, I think, has been a fan favorite before. I think the first season that Dorit was on the show, she was a fan favorite. And then after that, Dorit switched up and kind of became part of the Fox Force 5. So she's actually done the opposite. So now that, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm talking through this and thinking out loud. Yeah, I think definitely that was projection right there. Because, and she used the example of BravoCon. <laughs> they show footage of BravoCon with um, Alexander Rogers <laughs> calling a whole thing a thing and, and saying and asking why does she keep trying to make Fetch happen with Ted, Teddy Mellencamp? Which most of us agree with that, including me. <laughs> and she felt a way that Erica chimed in to defend, um, defend, you know, Kyle. And then same thing with um, Anna Marie. But Dorit didn't say anything. So she basically wants Dorit to be her flunky. That's what I'm getting from this whole entire thing. But anyway, that is pretty much though where... The episode ends for the reunion. Um, there was a lot there, but maybe the reason why I'm not loving this reunion is because it's focus. It's so focused on Kyle and it's focused on Dorit a lot. Um, it's very focused on Kyle. I don't think I want another season that's focused so heavy on Kyle. <laughs> I think that's part of why. Um, and then some of the other ladies, I wanted more. Like I, I still want more from Garcelle. I still want more from Crystal. And I think that was pretty much their segments right there. I don't think we're going to hear too much from them. Any well, we're going to hear from Garcelle again, I'm sure, because during the Dorit segment. Um, but yeah, I, it's just night and day, though. And I just, in a weird way, I think <laughs> the Miami reunion and watching that, I should, maybe I shouldn't have watched it first, but I won't have that problem next week and the following week because Beverly Hills will be on the day before. So anyway, 
But that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.